Hello and welcome to this educational video where today I want to talk to you about the four questions you must ask yourself before each and every trade. And it doesn't matter what method you trade, doesn't matter what market or what direction, but if you ask these four questions, we feel you'll increase your odds for consistency tremendously. For example, let's take a look at this chart here. Most traders looking at this would say, well, there's not much trend here, Steve, so I really don't know what to do. It looks like we're in a downtrend, so I think I'll stay out of this market. But with the four questions we're going to be learning today, the first question would have told you that we were actually in an uptrend. The second and third question would have told you where to buy and where to place your stop. And the fourth question would have ultimately told you exactly where to exit, which would have been right here. And in the days that follow the trade, you could have potentially captured 22 and a half points. So this is what we're going to be revealing today, the four questions that you must ask yourself before every trade. The beauty of this is it's very simple to apply these four questions on our platform, the PTS Primo Charting Platform that I developed with ProTrader Strategies that actually teaches traders how to trade. So welcome, my name is Stephen Primo. I am the president and founder of Specialist Trading. I've been trading now for 47 years. I started my career on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange. I was on the floor for 16 years and nine of those years I was a specialist. That's where you get the name Specialist Trading. If you're not familiar with what a specialist is, if you ever want to Google those old pictures of the trading floors, you see those people yelling and screaming and making those weird hand signals. Well, those traders behind those large wooden podiums were specialists. They basically specialized in making markets in roughly about 60 stocks. So if you wanted to buy or sell a particular equity, you had to go up to the trader who specialized in making a market in that equity. I did that during the crash of 87. I made markets in IBM and Waste Management, US Air. I also made markets and traded through the bull market that followed. I left the floor in the mid 90s to manage money and to trade my own account. And about 15 years ago, I teamed up with Pro Trader Strategies and formulated specialist trading with one goal in mind, and that was simply to educate traders around the world. And I'm happy to say we have students in over 115 countries and in every state in the United States. And so you'll see that attention to detail in really trying to educate you in today's educational video. Now, before we begin, as always, we're required to share this with you, so please take a moment to view our disclaimer. I'm going to show you a lot of performance results by applying these four questions, but please remember that we can in no way guarantee that any of the results I'm about to share with you will be repeated in the future. And since we are an educational company, all examples are strictly for educational purposes only. Now, another way to get more education on a daily basis is simply to follow us on Twitter or X, whatever you like to call it. There's our handle right there, abbreviation for specialist trading. You may want to copy that down because every day I post upwards of five or seven different snapshots of signals that our methods have generated. I also post little bits of financial wisdom to help you along the way. So there's lots of great free education on a daily basis. Please feel free to follow us on Twitter. Okay. Let's begin today's educational video, and we'll talk about these four questions. But first of all, I'd like to explain to you what my mentors taught me when I first started on the trading floor. They said, Steve, trading is really simple. It's the trader who makes it more difficult than it has to be. So think of it. If you have 10, 20, 30 indicators on your screen, if you're subscribed to all these blogs or chat rooms or trading rooms, if you're waiting with bated breath for every earnings report or every economic report to come out, you're really overcomplicating your trading. I know that from firsthand experience because 47 years ago when I first started trading, I did the exact same things. And for the first year or two, I really had a very difficult time making money. It wasn't until I simplified my trading by letting go a lot of these, what my mentors called useless noise, that's when my trading started to become consistent. So it really, you yourself who's making trading much more difficult than it has to be. Now, in order to be consistent, you must always ask yourself these four questions. And once again, it makes no difference what market you trade or what time frame. I don't care if you trade crypto on a monthly chart. I don't care if you trade tick charts for the e-mini futures. You should always ask yourself these questions before you actually pull the trigger. All right. So let's begin. Question number one. Am I on the right side of the market? Now, I know if you ask this question to most traders, they'll say, sure, I am. Yeah, I always follow the trend. I know exactly uh, whether I should be a buyer or a seller. But if that were true, why do 80 to 85 percent of all traders fail? Most of the time, it's because you're not on the right side of the market. But we have a simple and powerful way to determine that. 
let's once again look at that same chart in Adobe, okay? We looked at it earlier, and it didn't look as if there was a trend at all. But here's the first thing we teach our students, regardless of what market or time frame. Always apply the 50-period moving average, as you see right here. And then you ask yourself this question, where is price in relation to the 50-period simple moving average? As we see here, the majority of price bars have closed above. It's okay if they intersect the way they did right here, but we want to be more concerned with the closes. And if you see the majority bars closing above, as you see here, well, then the overall trend is up. All right, so what does this mean? Well, this means if the overall trend is up, we should only be a buyer. We will never be buying if price is below the 50-period moving average. Why? Because we're trying to put the odds in our favor. We're trying to give ourselves an edge. And over time, you will see your trading become more consistent if you only go long or take buy setups that are above the 50 as opposed to taking buy setups below. Okay, so you say to yourself, all right, well, I can live with that. So uh, I was originally going to short this, you say to yourself, but now I guess I'll buy and, okay, I'm a student of uh, candlesticks. And what do I see here? Above the 50 period moving average, I see a bullish engulfing pattern. So that'll be my buy setup, but I will go long if we trade just above that bullish engulfing bar. Okay, that's a sound plan. Sounds good. You're in sync with question number one, which now leads us to question number two. And that is, where do I place my initial stop? Now, most of my beginning students say, well, shouldn't I be finding out where do I get out with a profit? No, that's always uh, something that you wait for later on. And in fact, the stop placement is going to help us determine where our exit should be. So we always want to know where we're going to get out if we happen to be wrong. Now, in the courses we teach, we provide our students with upwards of six or seven different stop placements. So if you like to take on a lot of risk, we have stop placements for that. If you like to take minimal risk, we have stop placements for that. But let's just use a very generic stop placement for this example. All right. So we're going to use what we call the most recent short term low. And this is a pivot low. As you see right here, it looks kind of like a V formation where you have a three bar pattern. Bar number one makes a low, bar number two makes a lower low, and bar number three makes a higher low. This is a short term pivot low. And this is a good place, a very sound generic place to place your stop. So we place our stop order right there. This is prior to even entering the trade, but we know where we're going to be getting in. And if we're wrong, we know where we're getting out. And we can have this information readily available even before entering the trade. So now this brings us to question number three, which most students are interested in. And that is, what is my profit target? Okay, this is where students are always concerned about where do I get out with a profit? I want to know exactly how much money I'm going to make. Okay, so we already know what our risk is. Because if we enter here and our stop placement is here, well, we want to know the amount of points we would be losing. And that amount of points would be 11 and a quarter. Now, if that's too rich for our blood, if we only have a small account and we can't afford to risk 11 and a quarter points, regardless of how big our size is and our share position, we say we're not going to take the trade. And this is the beauty of this, because now when you're in charge, you decide for yourself if you trade or not. But if this is OK, if you have enough money to maybe buy a couple of hundred shares, maybe 100 shares, you say to yourself, I can risk 11 and a quarter points. OK. So what you want to do now, if that's your risk, 11 and a quarter points, what you want to do is double that amount. OK, so you double that amount, 11 and a quarter, which would come out to roughly 22 and a half points. And you add that from where you would be entering. OK, so take it from this point. You add 22 and a half. And this gives us your exit at 247. So we haven't even entered into the trade yet. But we know where we're going to be entering, what price. We know where we're getting out if we're wrong. And we know where we're getting out if we're right. This brings us to the fourth and final question, which is, how do I protect my profits? Now, why do we ask this? Because we know that most students feel that the worst feeling in the world is to have a trade and it's going well in your favor, that you're still in. And then all of a sudden, some news comes out or something happens with the market. And that positive trade where you had profit on paper now turns into a full, full blown loss. OK, so we want to protect ourselves when we are doing well. And we do this by applying the 50 percent rule. So let me show you what I mean here. What we want to do is determine where we would be entering, which would be right here to where we would be exiting with a profit. And we 
Divide that by two and find out where the 50% level is, half the distance, okay, which would be roughly right here. So this rule states that once price, if it goes in your direction, gets close to or is touching this 50% level, you should move your stop to unchanged. In other words, you would hate for yourself to have a profit. You see like, okay, we're doing well, and all of a sudden it just goes lower, and then you lose everything and a loss, and you gave back a lot of that profit. So remember, let's see the price unfold and see how it traded. We're watching to see if it gets to the 50% level, which it ultimately did. Oops, there it is. So at this point, what you want to do is cancel the stop here and move it to where you entered. So now you're playing with the house money. If the market does decide to turn around and go southbound, well, you're not going to lose anything. At least you'll break even. Now, a number of our students, like what they like to do is if they're trading with multiple shares, say you have 200 shares, they'll sell half their position here, place a stop for the remaining portion, and then sell the remaining portion of their uh, position up here. So this way, if the market does turn around, at least they made money at the half point. And now, here's the most important about, thing about all these questions. The only thing left to do is simply to watch the trade unfold. Remember we talked about keeping things simple by not overcomplicating? If your trading is going crazy, if you have two or three phones that you're on, if you have multiple screens, if you're yelling and screaming, if you have the TV on, you're probably not trading correctly. In fact, that's more of a gambling mentality. But if you're trading correctly, it's very boring. It's like fishing. You simply sit in the boat, you cast your line, and you wait. That's the way trading is if it's done properly. So now we have everything in place. All we have to do is just simply wait. So let's wait and see how the trade unfolded. There's nothing for us to do. In other words, if it goes up to here, we exit with a profit. If it comes down to here, we exit unchanged. So let's just see what happened. We have our orders already booked. It's going in our direction, but really not heading strongly. Now it kind of is going sideways to lower. But now it starts kicking into the upside. And then ultimately, we are able to exit with a 22 and a half point gain. You see how simple that was? We asked ourselves these four questions, and these are the four questions you must ask before each and every trade. Now, obviously, if you were going short, well, you would just turn the questions upside down, and you would just watch everything from a seller's point of view. So, we have a great offer for everyone watching this educational video today. This is called our Secrets of a Stock Exchange Specialist. This is a video seminar. Some years ago, I was asked to be the head speaker at a conference in Denver, Colorado, and I spoke for three hours where I went into detail talking about many more high probability trading edges. I talked about which indicators not to use, the difference between a system versus a strategy, the number one chart pattern you should have in any method you're trading, how to be on the right side of the market, There's four different ways in which to do that. But here's the most important thing I spoke about in that video seminar. I gave the complete rules to one of our premier pullback strategies. That's strategy number one. If you notice, we really just gave you four questions today and just gave you highlights and different ways in which to apply them to anything you're trading. But a lot of our students say, well, Steve, I'm new to trading. I don't have a strategy. Well, we'll give you the complete entry, exit, stop placement rules to strategy number one. Now, strategy number one is a pullback method. A pullback method is designed to look for a trend and then if it's an uptrend to buy at lower levels in an uptrend if it's downtrend to sell at higher levels let me show you what i mean here in this example in arhs as we see we have a full-on uptrend going now pullback traders and pullback methods like to buy at these lower levels okay let me show you how simple it is on our platform all you have to do is click on strategy number one and it instantly shows you where the buy signals were right at these lows. And every time a buy signal is generated, look what happened. The trend resumed upwards. Buy at the very lows, trend goes upward. And this last setup that was generated, look what happened in the following days. Right back up. Now this can also work to the downside. We have kind of slightly lower drifting market, but strategy number one generated a sell signal. And look what happened. 25 points lower in the next week. Now we've all seen how strong Nvidia has been lately. But it started to fall out of bed and go south, where a lot of people thought we had topped out and it was going to make lower lows. Strategy number one generated a buy signal. And days later, it was 250 points higher. So you will get the complete rules, entry, exit, stop placement, and money management to strategy number one, along with all of these edges included in the three-hour video course. 
Now this course, jam-packed with information, usually runs close to $1,000 as advertised on our website. Here's what we're going to do today. We're going to discount that tremendously down to only $37. Think of it. For $37, you are going to get what's about four to five decades of information, tips, techniques, and strategies that I've accumulated in my trading career. What's taken me that long to accumulate, you'll get on a three-hour video they can watch whenever you like. Yours to keep, okay? But this is for a limited time only. So we're also going to include one more extra bonus. If you decide to become a student of mine in the Secrets course, we will also include a 50% discount on any other product we sell. We have tons of other methods, trend-following techniques, indicators, as well as strategies that you can take advantage of with this great super 50% discount. You owe it to yourself to take your trading to the next level. Invest in yourself. Become a student of mine in the Secrets course. Here's how to take advantage of that. Contact my sister site, Pro Trader Strategies. You can call them directly at area code 310-598-6677. They have trading consultants manning the phones right now. Or you can copy and paste that link. It's not a live link, but you can copy and paste that onto a browser and go to the info page and sign up page online if you'd like. Okay. Either way, you're going to take advantage of this great, great deep discount and you'll be a student of mine as well. As we conclude and take one last look at our disclaimer, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this educational video. And I look forward to all of you becoming students of mine in the Secrets of a Stock Exchange course. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And I wish you all the best of luck in trading.